Jeff. Thank you for coming. Eli, thanks for having me. Definitely. Give you a warm welcome and a nice introduction. Uh, this is Jeff Joyce, uh, officer, police officer for the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, how long have you been an officer, Jeff? Uh, 21 years. 21 years. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, we're not here to talk about what you do <laughs> for work, trust me. I'm sure you've had tons of those conversations. Yeah, um, no what we're really interested in getting to know, and, and more importantly, our viewers to know and see, is a, a lot of the humanitarian work that uh, you're involved in, Jeff. We're, uh, we know a little bit about it. Uh, we'd like to hear a little bit more from you and your organization. Uh, the name of your organization is Nick's Kids Soccer, correct? Correct. How, how did that name come up? Well, uh, almost seven years ago, I was assigned into the Nickerson Gardens housing projects, and they call it the Knicks. Mm -hmm. And when I first started the programming, there are kids from the Knicks, and they just say, hey, let's go back to the Knicks. It was referred to as the Knicks. So then we started calling the kids, you know, Knicks kids. Yeah. So a lot of people think it's their apostrophe S, and <laughs> my name's Nick, so I get that confusion a lot, but uh, that's how it started. Yeah, so you get a lot of, hey, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I hey. feel like, hey, are you Nick? I'm like, no, I'm not Nick. <laughs> I would have assumed that myself. You know? yeah. I thought it was, oh, I guess we're going to interview yeah. Nick today. Yeah. Well, what's funny is we, we just did a uh, um, collab on the field to get replaced by the LAFC and the MLS. And on the press release, it had the apostrophe S. And I had to tell because they are thinking, oh, you must be Nick. I'm like, no. So I'm Jeff. They're like, what? And I had to explain the same thing. So it happens a lot. Yeah. Definitely. So you're like the, you're the founder. Yeah, me and, and, and community members. I don't like to say it's mine. Yeah. I don't like to say it's an LAPD program. Obviously, without the LAPD support, and it's part of the job I took being assigned to Nickerson Gardens. But uh, there's uh, Miss Lupita, who's a teacher for LA Unified, and uh, you know she grew up in the Knicks. And then some of the kids, you know, that are now in college that we helped, you know, I value their opinion. So we all kind of collab together, mm -hmm. you know, to create this thing. Because realistically, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You know, but it, it was just, I, I've never done programming. I've never done fundraising, none of it. It's just, you know, I was a, a cop in the hood my whole life, 77th. And I said, oh, I'm gonna go down to the projects and take a break because I'm tired, who's it was busy up there. So I get assigned Nickerson Gardens, part of this community safety partnership program that LAPD has where they assign officers into certain areas. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, projects or developments. And we're there not to just do uh, police work enforcement, but to build relationships and to find the good kids, do programming, and just kind of get to know the community, which I love because it's kind of like old school policing where you walk around and you get to meet people and it's not yeah. just jamming people up. Um, and so one of the first things I did is I asked some of the kids, like, what do you guys want? And they said, we just want to play soccer. And I was kind of like, well, we'll go play cool. soccer. <laughs> you know? It's a ball. I'm like, this, I, I didn't understand the culture in the area that you know, it's very violent and it, it's it's an ordeal to take the, the trash out to the trash can at night the whole family's got to watch you and a lot of these kids yeah. uh grow up indoors and uh so that was kind of sad that opened my eyes that you know you, you can't ride your bike or your scooter or walk around because you got to be aware of your surrounding so that was kind of like okay well let me get an old soccer ball and turn on the lights in nickerson and we just started playing oh man wow <laughs> and voila yeah now like we're that. here we got kids in college and we have a foundation, we fundraise, you know, we just, uh, it's really, Nick's Kids is really, we use a soccer ball as a draw, but it's, uh, it's really about education and morals and values. And so we use that soccer ball to get the kids, but we have standards academically. And then, you know, we support a lot of the kids that earn it. Uh, our foundation uh, pays for the kids to go to private school. Uh, just because in South LA, a lot of the schools, the education is different if you go to a more, um, um, I don't want to say richer affluent. area, more affluent, <laughs> affluent area, <laughs> just 10 miles away in the same yeah. LAUSD, yep. the schools are a lot different. Yeah. And I think, man, there's no way I can change that. There's, I mean, that's going to take a lot of change. It's wrong uh, because, you know, the, the kids in that area deserve it. But it's kind of these poor areas. We have this attitude, you know, that towards them that, you know, all, they're all poor and kind of all of them are bad. And it's such the opposite. A lot of the bad is from outside influence. There's so many great families there greater people than me and, and great family, just great people that, you know, are very family oriented. And just because they don't have money doesn't mean that they're bad people. Mm. And so it, it's just uh, being able to provide this higher education for them. Uh, we've seen work. So, and then now we have, we have a hundred percent high school graduation rate, which in wow. Watts a lot of times is around, believe it or not, like 40%, sometimes lower. Whoa. Wow. Uh, one of the big stats that I love and, you know, people don't want to kind of, well, I don't want to talk about much, but none of my girls have gotten pregnant. In Watts and some of these areas, 
um, you have, you know, teen pregnancies, you know, between the ages of 13 and 18 is huge. Um, none of my kids has been even named in a police report, ever had a negative interaction with the police because they get to, they don't just get to um, be around me. Uh, they get to see other officers in our program because we'll sit down and we'll be in the bungalow that we share and cops will come in and out, to eat their lunch, and they'll end up playing Monopoly with the kids. Yeah. And so it's good for officers too. So it's just something that, you know, with those stats, and then we have 15 kids have graduated high school, 12 are in major colleges like UCLA, USC, Long Beach State, LMU. We've been accepted at, uh, I think it's 74 colleges, Notre Dame. I'm a big fan of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> but it really has wow. made a difference to where, like, we, you know, seeing the GPA, our group GPA this last year was seventh grade and above was a 3.4. And that's that's crazy for, for Watts. But it, is. it works because of the morals and, and, and the discipline that we teach them. And, you know, the discipline is probably the biggest thing that makes the program work. Yeah. Man, it's safe to say you're very passionate about this, Jeff. Yeah. Ooh, I, <laughs> I, mean, I was unaware that, that yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Jeez. there's so much that you've covered, and we're gonna we're gonna go back to it a little bit, just break yeah. it down a little bit more. But thank you for just giving us a, a little bit of a rundown of of what you guys cover uh, with these kids, and um, you can tell that you have a heart of gold, and you have a lot Thanks. of support, and uh, it's a team effort. It sure, yeah, How it many always years? is. We're going um, about six and a half years. You've done all that. Yeah. So it's, it's been good. It's, wow. We've been blessed, but it really is a team effort. I kind of consider myself a middleman. So I've just got, I'm good at connecting, getting people to come in and help. Mm -hmm. And just like Eli here, you know, with the barbershop, right? Like, <laughs> I think it's about three years now. He, he cuts all our kids' hairs before school. Or if, if I say uh, during the summer, can the kids come in for haircuts? He gets all his, his barbers together and, and people to cut the girls' hair. And we just make a few hours of it. And these kids get to come into his shop, which is a barber shop. Like a real, real barber one. shop, yeah. You know, <laughs> Have yeah. their cousin cut it, um, but they get to come into a shop and kind of have that experience. And, and he even engages with the kids, which I, th which I think is huge. And he gets, you know, it's a little overwhelming when you got, you know, 30, 35 yeah. kids sitting there. But he, he takes oh, the so time. So you to bring talk the to entire them. class, the entire. Uh, I try to bring up, yeah, as many kids as we can. And yeah. that's just for people like, like Eli yeah. and other companies. You know, it's kind of the same thing. We don't necessarily, you know, need money. You know, we need money to pay, pay for certain things, but for the most part, you know, the experience is way more for these kids because some of these kids growing up never went to the beach never been out hiking into like the wilderness yeah. um just simple things that we kind of take for granted um they they've never experienced it and so providing experiences for them is huge you know getting them to a science center a museum when we go bowling we go over to like cerritos um getting them out of the hood kind of yeah. instead of just going to the same movie theaters the same places yeah we get them out and they get that experience and it's it's crazy but you see the kids when they leave the hood man they start smiling and they're i love the, the van rides because the kids are in the back of the van i just look in the mirror man i'm so happy because they're just being kids goofing around <laughs> you know being funny and then you see that and then they come together and we're like this big family we call it a program but we're, we're a family and uh you just see those bonds being created that again before they were living indoors so they didn't have any friends. Their friends was their brother or their sister wow. or their cousin. Somebody online. And now, yeah, yeah. they. I went to three quinceañeras this summer. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> They're Nick kids quinceañeras. They're all Nick kids. Oh. So because that's that's their their circle and their family and their yeah. friends. Yeah. Nice. Um, but it, it's it's great to see that again giving these experiences and that you know maybe they wouldn't have had if I wouldn't come along. Um, there's a lot of other great officers that, that do some great programming as well. So. There's a lot oh, to it, though. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. opens up their perspective, right? Because I'm, I mean, I'm from L.A. I was born like that. I didn't. I was never able to go anywhere. Just thinking of that, I remember I would go to a museum and it'd be like the best day. I was so hyped the whole week. The field yeah. trip, dude. We're gonna go to the <laughs> yeah. science museum. <laughs> like what? So I could just imagine like you bringing that to them, especially now that there's no field trips, right, with schools. Like I feel like that stopped. A lot of them have um, it. It's hard because some of them after COVID have really had a hard time recovering. And that's one thing I have great relationships with the local schools. So like they wanted to take the, I think it was first graders uh, to the science center, but they needed a bus. Our foundation paid rented a bus mm. for them so they could go to have that exact same experience. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you j just recently, we were at the, um, uh, at an LAFC game, the Compañeros Cup. Okay. Um, and we got some of our kids, we got to go out on the field and, and open up the flag in the center. And then a couple of our kids walk with the players. Oh. So experiences like that, you know, not all the kids could go on the field, yeah. 
but it was just being under the stadium and and you know LAFC sent us a players bus out and so these are these are experiences oh, they're going to have for the rest of their life absolutely instead of sitting at home living in fear uh, because many of our my kids have they've seen people murdered mm. they've been victims of mm. robberies um, and and seen a lot of violence and it's it's just not normal you know yeah. it really isn't you know we're, we're uh, very grateful that someone like you while being at work doing something completely different trying to protect and serve yet took the time to notice and, and find some empathy in these kids. And what moves you, Jeff? What moves you to do all this? Because you said something very key early on. You said that you don't know programming, you don't know how to uh, fundraise, but yet you, your organization that you're a part of and, and, and supported and launched just in a very short period of time has done some tremendous things. So what's that motivation behind that? You know, I... I'm trying to think of the movie, but it, you know, it's it's depicts kind of a true story where he he's just a medic, conscientious observer, no gun, but he keeps going up on the hill and lowering down somebody else that's injured, and he goes up and he keeps. It, I forgot the name of the movie, but he, his phrase is, uh, "Let me just get one more." He asks God, "Let me just get one more," and I kind of feel like I'll be like, "Man, I'm I'm tired, man. There's a lot of work." When I'm like, "Ah, we got to get a couple more kids, right? Let me just get one more. Let me help one more." And and so I I just think that especially in this world these days, we're, we're so full of, of anger and hate and judgment. Man, if we can just be open to the person sitting across it, regardless of your views, you're a human being, and we have loving and understanding and have conversations. And I can walk away and go, Eddie, you're, you're crazy, right? <laughs> but our, right. the kind of the, the, the feel of the world is if you sit down at the table, it's got to be a, if it's political, a Republican side and a Democratic side. And it's like, no, man, we can be yeah. together. We can I can sit and talk with a gangster one day. He, he's a football fan. We're just talking football. The next day, we might be chasing after him, right? But I still think you give that initial respect and you treat people with kindness and love. Um, unfortunately, some people are very violent, um, mm -hmm. so we don't always get a, a chance to do that. But uh, for me, it's just kind of getting that one more kid and helping one more because it just, uh, personally, it just, it just feels good, I guess. Yeah. Oh, man. Definitely. Oh, now, man. you know, you touch on an area, and we want to just – mention this for contrast because we're, we're listening to all the good that you've done from this area but let's talk about exactly a little more about this area nickerson garden where exactly is it located oh, what, in, what is nickerson garden the area it's in watts which is if you're going up uh the 105 where it meets the one uh 110 it's kind of close to there it's between compton and central from imperial highway to 111th it's the largest uh housing projects west of the mississippi it's a pretty large Close by, just less than a mile, about a mile away, is Imperial Courts Projects. And then uh, I think it's 1.2 miles away, you have Jordan Downs. <laughs> right up the street from Nickerson, you have a small one, Gonzac Village. So you have these projects, and unfortunately, you have gangs in those areas. Yeah. But uh, and, and so Watts in that area is really concentrated with, with a lot of that housing. Wow. And um, just from a statistical standpoint, what are some of the... Um, Things that happen in that neighborhood, for example, I mean, I hate to highlight something so negative, but what's the murder rate there? I just I just want the audience to know exactly where these kids come from and what it is that you're doing for them. You know, I, I don't know the actual statistics for murder rates. I can tell you, like, you know, a lot of the years in Nickerson will have, you know, nine murders inside of there. That's just inside of there. And then, you you know, but over the years, um, because of this programming, we've actually seen a decline in crime in the projects awesome. everywhere out in L.A. It's kind of on the rise. Right. Everybody sees that and knows it. But I think that's one of the direct results of, of with LAPD and the CSP program. Um, it, it's kind of created that where when you have relationships, you can talk to people. Um, you can hopefully de-escalate a, yeah. a lot of people's lives before it becomes a problem. Uh, for me, like programming for me is, is with the kids is I've got kids that they have older brothers or, or sisters who are active gang members. So realistically, they're supposed to become gang members. Well, we've broken that cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to high, they're going to college now. So, and they see both sides of it. I never, tr I never use my kids or ask them for information or talk bad about their family member, even if they're a gang member. And I know them. Um, it's not about that. But they get both sides of the perspective, which is is much better for them because a lot of times they just see one side, and we as cops only see one side. Right. And so with doing this, you know, I get to I get to understand the other sides, and uh, it it it's it kind of changes you. And I'll go, there is, I'm on a field trip and the culture there and the Hispanic culture is, you know, dad is, dad is God. You know, we don't, 
You don't ask him, he'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm in the van and I'm like, man, these kids are late. So I'm like, I'm, come on, we got to be on time. And uh, so I'm like, I'm getting mad. And I'm like, where is this kid? You, t- he needs to tell his, his, you know, tell his dad, come on, let's go earlier. And one of the kids at the time said, oh, Officer Joyce, uh, we can't do that. And so he explained to me and I listened. And from that point on, I never got mad because it's a culture. And so yes. having these programs and having police involved in the programs will bring down crime over time. It's not a, it's not a fix-all. CSP yeah. is not the fix-all. But when you can do this programming, it helps cops understand the culture we're policing and they get to understand our culture of why we're there. And so it's a great interaction when the kids can sit down and play Monopoly with a cop or play shoots and ladders, you know, yeah. or have lunch, or we go to a, you know, the LAFC game and they're sitting next to a cop and they just see them as regular people because they're not uniform yeah. sometimes. So it, it's a fix all for us as a, as a society um, for a lot of the crime ridden areas. Oh man, thank you. I, I think a huge thing just to just to kind of put an imagery on on this thing, it's like mm-hmm. a lot of these kids who are and, and to put a perspective on on what that area is, it's like kind of where that training day scene was based out of. Mm-hmm. So just so you kind of know what kind of gnarliness it is, right? But also I think the kids who come up in that situation often feel like maybe police are there to lock them lock them up or lock them down. So to be able to see that they can have relationships with police that'll actually allow for freedom and open up and open up hope. You know, like that's that's an, that's a crazy dichotomy that like yes. not enough people yes. get to see and get to understand. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So thank you for giving us a little bit more of that insight. Okay. Um, now, as far as uh, I, I know, there's been a lot of contributors that have helped and supported you. Uh, who who are some of the people that have supported your efforts? You know, when I first started, I was paying for a couple kids out of my pocket to go to the private schools. Verbum Day is a a Catholic Jesuit school right outside Nickerson, right outside. And I was paying for uh, another young lady to go to St. Lawrence, which is not far away. And so I was like, again, I need, how do I get one more? I can't afford, I can't work that much overtime. (laughs) Um, But I went to Chris Sorensen with Esplanade Builders right here in the South Bay. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, was asking him, he says, oh, definitely writes me a check, right? And then I'm kind of the same thing, like, hey, man, I want to get this other kid and, you know, two kids. And, and so it's grown. And with, with that, Chris Sorensen, they have um, um, different charity uh, events that they, they host, and they would raise money. And a lot of times, and it's all South Bay companies, mm-hmm. and, you know, he's based in construction, and, and so it's, it's, a, it's a big company. And, you know, they would just get their money and give it to the Laker Foundation. They'd have a golf tournament. And they go, you know, here you go, Laker Foundation. But they never saw where the money went. Goes, yeah. So he was like, man, this is this is worthy. So, you know, they, him and some of the uh, other owners of companies uh, started FLAG, the Foundation for Learning, uh, Athletics, and Growth, mm-hmm. um, pretty much to f- help fund me because as a police officer, I can't touch money. Um, and so I, have nowhere to, I had nowhere to go with my checks. We used to have at the police station a POW, but it got canceled out. So they kind of came in and saved the day, started this program. So now, you know, we hold a golf tournament, uh, the Hack, um, which is great. And then they have a, um, uh, a cornhole tournament called the Sack that they host. They've done poker nights. And so those guys have just been, a, you know, just amazing to have their help and see that that has grown. Uh, the Water Buffalo Club, we just recently got a $28,000 grant um, from them so we can get some more computers for the kids. Um, so there, there's... There's so many, like, uh, you know, Foot Locker has been out there. Acosta from the Acosta Foundation, who he's a player for LAFC, the LAFC, MLS. I mean, there's, there's so many, you know, um, people over the years that, again, it's not about you didn't give me money, but you gave me services. Um, Eddie from Underground, you know, the shoe company and the apparel company. It's a big company. You know, he came out, and I was like, I don't, I don't want your shirts. I don't want stuff for the kids because I'm sure everybody asks for that. Yeah. I, he grew up at seven six of Central, wow. so I and he now look at him, he's he's you know he's up there with under yeah. so uh, crazy. Him to come out and talk to those kids was huge, and he, he never talked to kids before, and he did a great job. He talked to them for about a half an hour, but he was them, and so yeah. he was telling them that look, you if you just try, you know you can make it, and so those are experiences and stories. It doesn't always have to be money like Foot Locker, yeah. you know. I've never gotten shoes from him, mm-hmm. don't care. I, rolled, I hold uh, job interviews for the kids, even the little 10-year-olds. We go, you have to dress up, and Foot Locker brings out its managers, and they sit in three separate offices, and they go off, and they get, it's like a real job interview, so they get that experience and learn. So Foot Locker giving me their time 
to do that is again it's experience it's it's not always about giving money um it's needed for some things but it's kind of giving a, a piece of your, your soul a piece of your heart um and the kids appreciate it oh yeah i mean wow, yeah right <laughs> speechless <laughs> you know, yeah. but you have a lot of support and we're so grateful to all those companies that you mentioned because we we see it we see it firsthand i've, I've personally seen it those kids are really really happy when they've come in uh, the times that i've got a chance to go with you guys to the yeah. Uh, the LAFC soccer game and the kids, I mean, you could see just their excitement. And uh, I got to see a little bit of the clip that you posted regarding the LAFC and, and the organization, the player, Acosta, mm-hmm. who, uh, what was, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because like, that was just recently, right? Yeah, you know, so I had to move from Nickerson Gardens. There's a lot of um, distractions inside of there. And so we would move around. And finally, at 109th Street Park, which is two blocks away from Nickerson, um, they had a tennis court, and it was converted to a small soccer pitch. And that was about um, almost six years ago. And so we started playing there. But that turf has just gotten – it was it was bad. It was – kids were slipping. You know, it hadn't torn yet, but you could tell it was getting close. And so I was like, we got to get new turf. Yeah. And I didn't realize how much turf was. It's, you know, it's almost $100,000 to do that field. <laughs> yeah. It, between – and so I, I was kind of – getting partnered with uh, LAFC and Acosta thinking that originally that was going to be like, you know, like maybe 55, 60 grand. And then when we started getting bids and all this, I was like, Oh my gosh. And there, and LAFC can only do so much as well. So then MLS, I was able to, um, you know, talk with uh, LAFC members and they got them to join in and that kind of saved the day and getting the new, uh, new turf there um, at the park for the kids so they can play. And so that was a huge, you know, getting us uh, those funds, now, that's a lot of money and you know originally a lot of them they want to push for let's just paint the cement let's just and it's nice the kids have okay. a play area because there's not a lot of areas to play but my kids deserve the best you know that's it. they're oh, my no, kids man. and so oh, i yeah. just kept pushing and pushing and three <laughs> weeks before we got it done it wasn't happening even LAFC, there in the emails, I'm like, there's too many yeah. things in the way with some of the regulations and this and and. But I, I just never give up, right? I just kept grinding, grinding, and I and so I said, let's not. I emailed the guy, listen, let let's let me call you, right? Let's talk on the phone. The emails are getting a little heated, yeah. and we spoke. He's a little upset. He kept cutting me off, and I just stayed the course. And now he's my best friend, and without him, we wouldn't have got it done. And he would just boom, 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 got it done. So having partners like that to stick stick through all that and get that field done, because that field, people see it, you see it as a soccer field, right, mm-hmm. where kids just come to play. But that's where our family gets together at least twice a week. You know, every Wednesday and Friday night we're there. That's where relationships are, 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 are found, right? That's where, you know, they, they learn morals, values, discipline. So it, it's so much more than just a soccer field. You know, it's, it's really the nucleus of where we do a lot of our, our programming through there. And um, so it was great to have all those great partners. You know, it's their home. Out. It's yeah. their home away from home. Yeah. Like the way you describe it, you're right. They can be themselves there, yeah. right, with positive people. Mm-hmm. Even though their household might not be as positive, they know that once they hit that field, everything's going to go away. And now yeah. it's just positivity. And it's funny, that's exactly what I tell them because, you know, I I know it's like case managing all the kids. So I know a lot of what's going on in their school life, their home life, and I know some don't have a lot of support. And whether it's me or or, um, some of the other coaches that I have, you know, kind of fill that role. They look up to you. And but I tell them, hey, when you get here, just forget about it. Forget what's going on at home and just come have fun. And a lot of kids, you know, they remember that they come in. I'm like, no, no, you got to leave it at the gate. And they do just come and have fun because they're going to get yelled at a lot anyway. By me, yeah. so. <laughs> but it's, it's discipline. You know, I, I think the biggest thing that makes my program work is discipline. Mm. And a lot of people, oh, discipline. I'm like, well, it's discipline. There's yeah. a difference between discipline um, from anger and discipline from love. Mine always comes from love. Yeah. Sometimes I'm yelling at them and making them run to the box and back. And it's, I'm not, I have to turn and I'm smiling at the parents because they know. But to them, I got to get their minds right, right? Yeah. And you got to teach them consequences, morals, values. And so it's that discipline is is huge instead of coddling to a lot of the yes. kids. Oh, they've been through so much. Yeah. So, you know, we have to That's hold them softly. Help them. And like, I think it's the opposite. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. I've, I've had to kick a lot of kids out of my program and mm. kids that I were like really close to. Mm. Um, but we have standards, we have rules and we bend those rules for each person a little bit. Right. Um, but ultimately I can't want it more than you. And so if the kids don't want to accept the help, 
They don't want to get their minds right. We're going to stick with them for as long as we can, but at some point they got to go because we have to have consequences. Yeah. And there's good consequences. You do good, you get rewarded. You know, yeah. you do bad, you get punished. That's yeah. life. Like, yeah. why would you cut that out? You know, you're doing them a disservice if you treat them any other way than how you're doing it now. Yeah. Like that discipline, I I mean, even till when I was growing up, I had to go find my own discipline because my parents, they're too busy working. Yeah. So you being that person for them, it's you change their lives. Hopefully some of them. They're, they're all great lives. kids. So they're all great kids. But, you know, they, you know pushing the academics is, has been huge because a lot of them came in with 0.00 GPAs, 1.3. You know, we have a 2.8 minimum that you have to maintain to stay hey, playing. Nice. We don't kick you out. If you drop below that, you bring your books to the park and you're going to study there. Ms. Lupita is going to help tutor you. Uh, and so it, it doesn't stop. It's just if, if you're not trying. If you join and you have a 1.2, that's okay. We're going to help you. Yeah. But as long as you're 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 going up, we're gonna stand by your side. Some of the kids get, oh, I'm at a 2.7. I'm not gonna be able to play. You know what? Yes. You're good. Next yeah, report yeah, card. Yeah, let me yeah. see the work. It's yeah. not always. You know, you gotta because they have different situations. Yeah. And uh, but it kind of helps. There's nobody there to motivate them sometimes, right? When it comes to schoolwork. And so having that, not just me, but you know, Miss Lupita and Coach Eric and Gabriel and all these you know great coaches that come out and help. You know, they're they help mentor as well. So it's not just me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a group wow. effort. You know, yeah. like. Oh man, that's a, I mean, you, you, honestly, like, what a program you built! Like, like, wow, I just I can't even begin to like. Yeah, I think about myself. Like, if I would have had something like that, right? Like, that really, like, put me on a different path. You yeah. know, I think um, my life would have been a lot different. And I'm, like, wow, just to hear that you're doing that. It, just like, thank you. That's all I can say. Yeah. Like, it's just incredible that you able to like make it happen because all this like you, you tell me you have a whole crew and they got to teach and now the kids have to have this requirement of not just we're not we haven't even discussed soccer yet <laughs> like we haven't even no. we haven't even discussed <laughs> soccer like so you're providing these kids with so much their life is so much richer because they're in this program and then you get to play soccer yeah we, and, we, and we win. We're pretty good on the soccer pitch. So. I, I, I've uh, thumbed through your Instagram. I was like, that's one thing I was going to say. I was like, you know what? People might think it's like, again. no, they're actually good players. Yeah. I will see them running drills. And I'm like, whoa, these kids are actually good. Yeah. Like, I thought it was some, like, you know, like, a, not necessarily a gimmick, but I thought that, you know, that wasn't an emphasis. But actually, you're teaching them how to become better players plus better human beings in life. Yeah. Like. We, I want them to win just as much on the field, but I want them to win more off the field. Yeah. And so oh, that's yeah. how we have it is, you know, we want them to win in life yes. and uh, be productive adults, and we want to help them do that. So if they want to do the work, man, then they're good to go. But How do you select them? You know, a lot of times we used to have a waiting list, and then I just stopped that because, you know, when I say we're a family, like we, we have like – three or four brother four brothers right from one family we have two from here we have four from here brothers and sisters and and so we have a lot of families um in our program so we don't lose a lot of kids i usually you know go through 10 kids to get one or two because oh, a lot of times okay. sometimes it's the parents that are the problem the kid's a good kid mm. um but the parents can't get them there because this program is entirely free it, uniforms you know i think we have five different uniforms like shirts we just got new hoodies so th this is all free um everything we are and nobody gets paid nobody gets a stipend nobody yeah, gets yeah. paid you know i'm there on my days off i'm, I'm dealing with stuff at night on when i'm off because like you said earlier it's become my passion but uh it is it's it's so much more than just soccer like i said soccer is just a draw yeah you're you're building a strong communities there because those kids are going to eventually become adults and they're yeah going to have their family. They're going to always remember what you've done for them. Uh, I'm pretty sure it, something like that just doesn't yeah, go it's away. It's life-changing. It yeah. really is. And, uh, and for the better. You know, it's for the better. You're giving them hope. You're giving them hope. You're, you're uh, holding them accountable. Uh, these are all things that they're going to need in real life. And, right. and that's, that's beautiful that your program, your organization uh, has that at its forefront. That, yeah, you know, we'll, let, we'll give you a chance. But we'll help you improve, but you have to improve right. because you're helping them change that mindset, right? It's, it sounds like it's a mindset thing that uh, perhaps can, can, can help them see the benefits of joining your program and, instead right. of perhaps maybe thinking of something else. Absolutely. You know, I no. tell them uh, uh, you deserve what you earn and you earn what you deserve. So. Nice. Should be on a T-shirt. 
<laughs> yeah, dude. Definitely. Oh, all right. No. I like that. Put that down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the inspo. Yeah. Yeah. We'll handle it. Yeah. No, that's definitely. I'm sorry, guys. Speaking of handle, at Nick's Kids Soccer on Instagram, yes. if you're listening. And we have nickskids.org on our website. So. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, no, let me ask you, so you've, uh, some of the kids have gone to college, you mentioned earlier? Yeah, se- several. You know, we've been, that's one of our biggest successes academically. And, you know, I'll tell Gabriel Banuelos was the first kid I paid to go to Verb. And uh, he was like our first captain. And, you know, none of our college kids is, you know, go away. You know, if, if they, they come back and they mentor the other kids. And so it's great to see a college kid who's 19, you know, coming back on a Friday night but they have these great relationships with the kids. And so, again, nobody's getting paid. We help them if we can with, with yeah. college, with, uh, you know, helping them with books or whatever they need. But, you know, Gabriel has been such an inspiration to me because I, I would go to him and seek his opinion because I thought, you know, I don't want to be that cop and be too, um, too rough on him. And so I, I always ask for his opinion, what do you think? Because I value it. And that was since he was 14. And... You know, he's 20 now, but such a great young man because uh, he won a ESPN award in 2021 for our program. Uh, he won, he went, got flown back to New York, and here he grew up in Nickerson Gardens. Talk about experiences. Yeah. He got flown back to New York. It was still a little COVID, so it was out on a pier, but he was on the stage, and he was presented with the Billie Jean King Youth Leadership Award for our program. Oh, and uh, But he's at UCLA now. He's a junior, and he's still, you know— you know, actively involved and, and helping me run the program and, and a big part of it, and as are, you know, Dylan and Ayala and some of the other uh, Edwin, you know, the young men that they, we want them to go to college. You know, my next step is I want them to go away to college. And it's hard, especially with the Hispanic is they want to stay home because yeah. that's all they know yes. is yeah. I want to go, I want them to go out of state. Yeah. So, but I've got a young man that's at Cal State Northridge living on campus and he was really scared at first. He's like, man, this is out of my comfort zone. I got to leave. And I said, you just, you, it's okay. I said, I don't care if it's two in the morning. If you need to cry and talk, call me. You're going to be homesick. And uh, he's doing great. He doesn't even want to come back. And I told him this is going to happen. <laughs> I said, you're going to go there, and you're not going to come back because these kids operate similar to cops in a high state stress level, but it becomes normal. You know, a lot of people, they have a little stress, but they're, you know, kind of flatlined and they have a little stress. But cops, you know, we kind of operate way up here, and on our days off, we maybe come down to the normal line, but we never get down below it. And so these kids are the same thing because they're always under stress, but it's normal. They have PTSDs, right? They have all these different, you know, undiagnosed uh, psychological problems that, you know, they need counseling because it's not normal to see and hear, you know, some of the stuff that you're you're hearing. It's not normal hearing and seeing gunshots and, and having to jump to the ground, you know, several times. So these are things that, you know, he doesn't realize that by living there, it's just peace. He doesn't have to worry about that. He can go to the game and, you know, violence is everywhere, but it's just getting him out of that environment. You know, that's the next step is trying to partner with some of these colleges, um, hopefully in like Arizona and Texas. Uh, TCU has been great, you know, trying to get them where they'll give me one scholarship a year just to get the kids out. Because the kids, all of our kids are going to college right now. Nobody's got debt. Nobody's paying anything. We help them prepare for college. Like we're just starting our prep now for this next year for our seniors is so they get grants and scholarships um, and they qualify because they get the good grades because we push them and we tell them you got to start getting these good grades now seventh grade and up because it makes a difference. And uh, so preparing them for that has been huge to where they're going to school for free. Wow. And I tell them it's free now, but you earned it coming to Nick's kids and working hard in high school and all that. It gets you where, you, and when you go to college, you're getting paid sixty, seventy thousand. It's just not going into your pocket, but you're not paying it, and so not having any debt is huge. And you know, someone will have, you know, what I still owe like fifteen hundred, and we'll pay for it. So we don't want them to get any debt. And, you know, David, who's living out in Cal State Northridge, you know, I took him to Target, and we bought him everything he needed for his dorm room, you know, to make sure he's set. And he needed a meal plan because we got started a little late uh, with his on-campus living. So, you know, it's like $800. We just paid it for him so he doesn't have to worry. And so that's the great thing about having all these supporters. We definitely need some money, yeah, yeah. To, but none of our money goes towards um, – we don't have rent. We don't have vehicles. Nobody gets paid anything. Um, and so all the money goes towards the kids in the program. So it's, it's, it, it really is great. It's, it's something that can happen anywhere in this country. If we get together and we really want change, if you get the right people with the right heart, they don't need to be paid. Is that what you see? You see that you see that across the nation that, that people get together 
create kind of organizations like you, the one you built? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I feel I could go anywhere, and it could be a football, it could be a basketball, baseball, it could be a baseball, a violin. Um, I just think involving the police and community in the high-risk areas, like going into Chicago, right? We have to start somewhere, right? You know, I know we have bad policies. We can talk about the DAs. We can talk about all that stuff. But what if we just get the kids before they even get to that spot, right? And it's an investment in your future. And unfortunately, with a lot of cities, they want to know what's this going to do for me now, right? So they need results in a year. And it's, you know, your first year is kind of establishing your discipline. You can't come in with crack on the whip. You'll have nobody left. So you have to slowly increment and they have to see your heart. You have to earn the trust of the parents. So I think having community come in with, with police is huge. And there's private donors. It doesn't take much to start this. It, as long as you get the right people that aren't looking for the paycheck, stipends. And unfortunately, a lot, a lot of nonprofits, you know, it's, you know, not a lot of the money goes towards the actual, you know, what they're, what they're serving. And with us, you know, there's gonna be costs down the road, but I think with the police, if I need a van, I can borrow them from LAPD, right? I go on duty and I can drive the vans. So they're going to have this anywhere you go, right? You can work with the city. You can find a donor that, you know, maybe you don't, you're not putting people in private school the first year or two, right? Um, but you're establishing the kids, getting them, and then you start building. And there's donors in every city. They're everywhere. Yeah. There's a lot of supporters of the police in the community. And so this is a change that I think if we start, you know, it's not a fix-all, but for long-term, getting the kids and the parents, you know, that come from that, you know, the bad era with, you know, their... What are they thinking? You know, cops were rough or whatever. They come from that, so in their mind, cops are bad. Yeah. Well, we can change some of the parents too. And I have mm -hmm. a parent. She hated me. She hated the cops. <laughs> she didn't hate me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She hated the uniform. Yeah. But she and it, you know what? I was persistent. I kept knocking on the door. Hey, is okay if if this if if, if your son you know comes with us to here? Mm hmm. <laughs> right. Knock again. Oh, the, the the metal door opens up a little bit. <laughs> How are you doing? You know, little things, right? Now she'll come out to the police car. She says, hi. She'll go to a meeting and say, you know what? I don't like me that, that police so much, but I love me that Officer Joyce. But that's a huge <laughs> thing because she had, she had, you know, the police were at her door because of a, uh, you know, one of her, a family member. Yeah. And they had a right to come in. It was never positive. Yeah. Like, There's a cop at your door. Yeah. It it's never. never but she called me. And I would never, it was a Sunday. I was off. And this is early on. And I, but I picked up the phone. And uh, I'm glad I did because I got her to open the door because I said, look, they're going to come in either way and something bad can happen then. You're not going to like it, but they have a legal right to come in your home and search and do what they need to do and then they're going to leave. So the sooner we get that over with, the better and nobody gets hurt. That's the biggest thing because things can happen, right? And I was so glad that she listened and you opened the door. And so these are things as, as police officers we can use if we know who we're talking to. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if, yeah, if the gang officers got into it with somebody and I know them, hey, you know what, let me take him to the station because things are heated right now, right? Let, let us, let us take him to the station and book them for you, whatever, because we have a better little rapport because we're in there all the time. So I definitely think it's a, it's, it's definitely something that has positive effects that can be used anywhere. Yeah. It's not a fix all. No, no but you're. It's a tangible um, difference. You're making a tangible difference. That connection between the, the house life or, or that uh, community with the police. Like where else you can't you can't get that. Like yeah. You 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 cannot get that. Like there's there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely making a difference from within. You know, a yeah. lot of times people can look on the outside and, and tell people what they would want them to do, but when you're inside and you've built that rapport, uh, you've seen the benefits. And now, I mean, I, I can see you're you're excited about it. You you, you want everybody to. You know, maybe follow suit and, and try to build that rapport within yeah. those communities. And, and starting at a younger age is uh, you really seen a lot of benefits. I mean, I've seen it in just the few years that you've been coming. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen the difference. I've yeah. seen how much bigger each uh, back to school event gets yeah. and how many kids and just the the. the level of comfort and, and, and respect that they show you. They're very respectful kids. I mean, just just from my perspective in the, in the in the event that we had at the shop, they were cleaning, sweeping. They're helping each other out. They're, yeah. uh, you know, you had a nice tent. You had goodies for them. They're they're helping you set up, helping you with the takedown. And I mean, and they were happy to do it. They weren't. Yeah. It wasn't like they were begrudging or anything. Or oh, I gotta do this for you know, play soccer. Or, you know, <laughs> but yeah. no, it was like they were happy to do it. They were eager beavers, right? They're yeah. moving and grooving and enjoying, uh, uh, you know, the the experience that you put together for them and. 
you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have been a, a small part in it, and I'm, I'm so happy to see uh, your organization grow. But I, I want to ask you something. Where, where do you see Nick's kids soccer in about five years? I mean, now we've seen your trajectory here in these six years and what you've done. Where do you see yourself in five more years? Uh, I mean, what I want to do is um, do the same thing, but try basketball in Nickerson because, you know, soccer – it's weird in the hood, you know, soccer's not really accepted be, um, because it's not a traditional, you know, black sport. So a lot of my black kids will get called Mexicans or beaners. And, and so it's, it's hard, but um, it's such a great sport. And that's one thing about the Acosta Foundation is, you know, he's black. You, know, he's, you never know, but he's Japanese also. And uh, so he wants to bring more of it into the, the culture. And so getting that is, is really hard but one of the things that we can do is is like basketball is big right basketball or football so mm -hmm. i'd like to start a nick's kids basketball in that area i would love to go out to other and branch out and try to anybody that wants to listen I'll, I'll help them out trying to start it but i mean i'm never one like i want to get 100 kids like the same time because it's a lot of work and i think that's the difference in ours is i'm not looking at how many kids i have because i want to impact 100 percent of them completely like I, I don't want to have 100 kids but I'm only impacting 30 I want to have you know the 38 kids I have now I want to impact them 100% all 38 and so when I feel like I can manage because we started with 20 kids and now we're at 38 plus we have college kids um, we can grow and get bigger and hopefully uh, you know pass it on to other areas is what I'd like like to see because we've already branched out and we have you know you start started with kids just from Nickerson but I've got kids from Compton um, I've got kids from other parts of LA um, I've got uh, some that actually come from, man, what is it, way off the 605. They used to live in the Knicks, but they love the program so much they drive down every Friday. Um, so I, I definitely think it's something, like I said, that I, I'd love to see it grow, um, but I don't want to just – I don't do a lot of media or I don't – you know, I just, I just want the results from the kids. That's what I want to see, but I would love to see us do more of this. I think we have the capacity with the community safety partnership because they're all over the city of LA. So we could branch out to some of these sites where we have officers already. Uh, we just got to find the right people that, you know, have the heart that want to put in the work and get it done. Yeah. And, and, and hopefully this will be a platform where they can see this interview and, and this will be something that will strike someone's heart and, and perhaps uh, reach out to us and we'll, we'll definitely connect you and, yeah. you know, continue to ha have this grow. I mean, this is, you've had tremendous growth in, in a few years. Um, let me ask you something. What's one of the things that's been the most memorable to you? I mean, you've said a lot of different things. You've done so much. What stands out to you in this experience? Man, there's so many, like, it's so, so much <laughs> positive stories, you know. Um, it, it's, I'm so proud of all the kids, you know, with the GPAs and stuff. I think one of the highlights is, you know, having Gabriel – um, he was accepted to 19 different schools, all full ride, Notre Dame, you know, I think it was, uh, you didn't get him to go there, huh? you know, cause I didn't want to influence. <laughs> I said, it's a good school, but I didn't want to, I didn't, I, he had to make the decision. That's um, awesome. but I think seeing him win an ESPN award and then, uh, and his sister Julia, who's, she's my daughter. Um, and, you know, cause she doesn't have a dad in her life and neither is Gabriel. And so for me, I'm, it doesn't matter how they see me. I see them yeah. as my kids. So I think having those relationships um, in my life and seeing them grow and become, you know, productive young adults, not adults yet. Uh, but seeing that is, is huge for me, but there's so much because, you know, I'm very close to David that's out of Cal State Northridge, right? Like, you know, there's seeing him out there. I'm so, that's like a proud father, right? Um, I just think the relationships is probably the biggest thing for me is having these people, they become my family, you know, and it, it, it means a lot to me. Uh, to have them in my life. It's changed me as an officer because I was a lot angrier because we only see the negative side of, yeah. of yeah. humans. Again, we don't we That's don't get called job. to your birthday party. You don't call <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, we got cake well, you, well, you might, but it's at the end <laughs> yeah. of the party. <laughs> but you know what? With my program, I do. Now I, I'm going to Keensey wow. Yards, right? And so this wow. is where I'm thinking that, you know, for police officers, we see just negative stuff. But most of the time, like 99, 98.7, you know, percent of the time we arrest people without using force. 99.999% yeah. of the time we arrest you without killing you. Yeah. We have a pretty good track record when you look at the statistics. Those don't make the news, though. Yeah. But <laughs> I think we do a pretty good job. But we see a, a lot of negative stuff. And it's not normal. And mm. as cops, it's kind of like our military. They just, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Yeah. And inside, I'm like, I'm not okay. Yeah. You just got to keep, you know, that, that person out. We just got to keep going. Um, but it's a struggle because you might be able to see 10 dead bodies, right? 
and then it freaks you out. Mine might be 100. You might be 20. You yeah. just don't know when your file's full, it's full. Mm. And it's hard to deal with, and it comes out in anger, um, mm. frustration. You know, a lot of cops, we have high suicide rate. Yeah. A lot of um, families destroyed, yeah. alcoholism. Yeah. And so I, I see this as not just a way for, you know, we're helping the kids in the community, but I love having um, officers come interact and so they can see the good side of policing and see some of these kids because it's it's hard. It, it really is. And so the kids are struggling and we're struggling. So let's come together and have a positive moment. Let's play some some uh, hood uno. You know, <laughs> what we call it. But it, it goes a long way for, you know, for the officers yeah. too. It's, it, it, it changed me. Um, I went to counseling. I tell the kids, man, because I grew up, you don't go to the doctor. You don't go to counseling. Mm -hmm. It was the best thing for me. I still use those tools today. And this has brought Nick's kids so much joy and happiness and love that I'm filled with. So I don't, I don't have time for all that anger and, and frustration. And so it's changed me as a person. And so I want the same for other officers to see this, even if you just interact a little bit, as well as helping the kids. I mean, everybody wins in this, right? The yes, community members, the yes, parents, the yes. kids, and the cops, yes. right? And then your your crime statistics go down over time, right? Yeah. And you start to change a negative, you know, a, a negative, a negative atmosphere, right, in some of these areas. It's negative. You know, it looks like a yeah, prison system. Yeah. You know, the lawns are overgrown and it's horrible. Yeah. Who wants to grow up there? But you start yeah. to change that and these kids come back and cops are more motivated to help, right? And so they're not just arresting people, but they have a little bit better understanding. And so everybody wins. They're more invested in the community, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it, wow. That's, yeah. I, I really like the, the, your approach and the way you're, you're seeing the, how you can help more, right? It's almost like you're infiltrating them from within. Yeah. Right. You're going. It's like, how can I? I can't do a commercial and just uh, influence these people. I really have to go home by home and affect what's more important to them, which is their children. Yeah. It's like Start I'm gonna be. Yeah. I'm gonna be a, a, a source for them. You know, just the information that you help them go to college. Like that information, I, I didn't even understand it. A lot of Hispanic uh, families <clears throat> automatically school after high school is out of the. We're not even discussing it because of the price. Because yeah. of the price. Right. So if somebody comes in and we're going to help you get the money you need to get to that, to the school, it's everything. Like, I, I don't even think parents can help, like, thank you enough. I don't think they don't, they'll have the words. Yeah, but that's the good thing is, like, I have some, I have some just wonderful parents. And so, like, we, we have a barbecue every summer. We do a Christmas party. And I could easily just get it paid for. You know, and just mm -hmm. pay for the stuff. But I don't. I, so I'll get the, you know, I think we, we had Lamelli's, right? We went and got oh, some man. chicken fettuccine Alfredo. Yeah. And, and I said, I'm just going to get that. And then I let parents, you're going to bring the water, you're going to bring the ice. It gives them ownership. So again, uh, I don't want it to feel like it's yeah, me just yeah. buying everything. They're and, contributing and they, to They appreciate it. And I have fathers, you know, where there's not a lot of fathers in that area coming back as coaches. And so their thank you as I pay for your kids to go to school is, you know, like Eric and Tony, like they, they're there when I need them. If I, hey, can you give this kid a ride? They're like, absolutely. Like they're so appreciative. Mm. And some of these guys have grew up in the neighborhood. So they're like, man, we don't, we don't like cops like this, right? But they're actually out speaking. Like we went to Water Buffalo Club. I mm -hmm. let him speak in our presentation because he can tell like, man, it, I grew up, it wasn't like this. But man, I'm so thankful right now because it's so much different. And so you know, again, you, you start with the kids and that's how you get the adults. Yeah. But it's hard because I had David, the one that's at Cal State Orchard, mm -hmm. you know, and some of the other ones are like, I, you know, I, well, police were kind of bad. You know, they didn't know. They never had an interaction, but in the hood, police yeah, are bad. That's, that's, so they're scared. Yeah. And so you do this programming and all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, there's a whole other side of it. And they don't, they're just seeing the uniform. You know, and I go against when they see a white officer in the hood in an yeah. LAPD uniform, yeah. that's an automatic yeah. enemy, right? So I got to fight against the fact, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. But it is. You're breaking down those barriers, yeah. those, those misconceptions, those uh, assumptions that, you know, so many people make. Um, but thank you for opening up to us and, and really sharing your drive, what you do for the community, for the kids in that particular community and the surrounding communities, how it's grown. It started yeah. from such a small desire to help, right? And then you've gone above and beyond to really help so many people, so many kids and families, and that's huge. That's changing lives. That's going to have a ripple effect in our community. So uh, it's always good to see and, and, and be able to uh, be a part of and sit so close to you and know you, man. <laughs> I'm so grateful to know individuals like you because there's not too many people yeah, out man. there. And and hopefully this will inspire some of the people that, um, so. uh, so. you know, view our podcast and to 
you know, doing something. Uh, just like you said, it's not monetary. You, you've said that repeatedly. Our, our previous guest said that repeatedly. Helping, assisting, contributing, uh, volunteering is not money, is not the most important thing. Your time, yeah. uh, your energy, your effort, your smile, uh, a positive thought, a pat on the back. I mean, these are all things of encouragement that can help a kid get out of the little funk that he may be into or a family. I mean, you've gone above and beyond, Jeff. We are so grateful. That's a team effort. <laughs> You're part of that team, Eli. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm grateful yeah. to be a part of it. You know, not just me. You know, my, my, my staff at the barbershop. Yeah, um, we are so grateful uh, when the kids come in. They, you know, and, and back to school is, is big for us. Yeah. But that is to us the biggest. We're happy. Um, I have a, an apprentice who recently joined, joined us and he got to experience what it was like to, to give back to his community. And he's 19, David, and he was just, it just opened his eyes because he, do, he doesn't come from very much and he has his own situations and circumstances like all of us do. Yeah. But yet you're still motivated to give and because it's a great cause. And your cause and what you're doing with those kids is unbelievable. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It is. They, we, I, we teach them to give back, you know, also, like you said, they, they have so much fun. If you go back and look at some of the clips, like mm. I teach them to come out. We don't do alley cleanups. I don't like it because everybody does them. And I just we wash police cars mm. and the cops love it. They see their because our cars don't get washed. So they wash them. But we have competition. They have music playing. They're dancing. They're out there in the hot sun for four hours. You know, we get them something to eat. But again, they're together. It's not work. Oh, yeah. If you mm. watch them in the car wash, they're having fun. And so it's a great thing, like I said, is, is teaching them the, to give back for definitely. everybody. It's, it's and it gives them pride, important. too, because if they do see a cop, uh, a car, and it's clean, it's almost like, oh, dude, I was part yeah. of that. Especially because those that's the community where that um, the LAPD um, patrols, so they're going to yeah. see it. Yeah. Like, and, and, again, the cops really appreciate it because some of those cars need a little bit more squirts of Febreze. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get in, it, it's nice because oh. you're like, oh, man, this is a stinky one from last week. And then you get in it, you're like, oh, man, it's nice. It's armor all and a little Febreze. Uh. And so it's, it's nice. So we, the cops definitely appreciate it. Like I said, everybody wins, man. Yeah, everybody gets a little yeah. piece of it. So. Definitely. Yeah. I feel... Um, I guess this is, I'm like starstruck. Like this is like when you meet somebody and they're doing things that you can't even I can't even imagine. Like I'm like, wait a minute, you put all that together. Wait a minute, you still have you have a full time job. Yeah. Wait a minute, how? Yeah. Like That's I can't e I can't even wrap my uh, brain around it. Like how much work you must and the persistence to get like the the field. I know so many people would have just quit. Be like paint the paint the damn black. Uh, uh, yeah, I was close. Yeah, paint it. <laughs> I thought it. I, I, ima I, thought I it. imagine everything around the whole field, right? The field nice and green, and everything around it just looks trashy. But that area yeah. looks so clean. I can just clearly see it in my head, like just over or like an overview uh, drone shot. Like yeah. I literally see it. Like it's like the patch where it's growing and and almost like it's touching the whole community because yeah. how you built it there. It's so impactful for every every kid, every everybody that passes by. It's like they have to look because every everything around their surrounding is not nice. Yeah. And this field is just perfect. Hundred thousand dollar field. I can only imagine how like how nice it looks. Yeah, and the great thing is is it's open to the community. Like you know, a lot of times we want to lock some of that stuff up, but I'm really big on we got this here the community it can't just be for me or just for the park. Yeah. Let's keep the gate open. And you know, I I know a lot of the community kids that are there before and after waiting to get on the field when we're done with our programming and they're so respectful you know i tell them we got this new field i don't want to lock it up but we got to pick up the yeah. water bottles no gatorade out here and they do it I, i've been by there the last you know couple nights and i see them and i say hey what's up you know like hey we're gonna close the date when we're gone so it gives the community a little bit of ownership right right because they're c kind yeah. of taking care of the field so it's not just nick's kids again these things have it, it just grows you know yeah. you plant these seeds and uh so it touches you know a positive only goes, you know, we only tell people, if, if I, you have a good steak, you tell us, oh, it's pretty good steak. You tell one or two people. Yeah. But you have a bad steak, you're telling everybody. You're on Instagram, you're every, <laughs> yeah, Snapchat, yeah. you're telling <laughs> everybody, right? So Yelping. positives, it's really hard to get the positives, you know, that ripple effect. But once you start it, it, it just, it keeps growing. We just got to keep working on it. Yeah, Definitely. I, and I, I think it's safe to say, oh, go ahead. I sorry, for our listeners and viewers who want to help water the seed, um, you know, have resources or just have the time or the calories to help, uh, what's the best way that they can uh, be a part or 
part of helping Knicks Kids Soccer is at the org is the best place to go. And or you send us a message on the Instagram. Or the Instagram. It's fine, yeah. We usually get back to you pretty quick on that. Our, our um, people are like, active. Yeah. So. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so we wanted to wrap it up by saying thank you, Jeff. Thank you for your time. Thank you, We appreciate, appreciate you coming you. here and uh, giving uh, the South Bay Connects community uh, some inspiration and, and sharing what you do with the kids at Nickerson Garden. It's it's a short of a, a remarkable, short of a miracle, really. Yeah. Uh, and we're grateful for that. Uh, speaking of being grateful, we also like to thank our sponsor, uh, Finley's uh, Tree Landscape and uh, Construction. Uh, they have made this possible. Uh, they've assisted very much with uh, helping us uh, be able to create this podcast so that we can spread that message. We're very grateful to Finley's. Yeah, thank you to you guys. That's that it's really great. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, you know, let me come and be in here because it's uh, never been on a podcast. So, <laughs> first for everything, man. Really? Well, yeah. dude, you can <laughs> you yeah, you killed this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, you killed this that thing, was an man. Yeah, yeah, like I, it's I'm I'm like happy to hear like people like that. It's like it's so inspiring because you really look at your life and you're like, damn, dude, I'm not doing nothing. Like I, I look at me, I'm like, dude, I'm not as much as I think I'm doing. Like, it's like, oh, no, bro. You, you no. But as long as you're doing do something that matters, I tell the kids, yeah. like, I may have a higher capacity to do more. Right. That doesn't make me better than you. As long as you're doing something positive, I tell them for somebody else, go, go sit at lunch with the kid that's new at school. Right. These little uh, things you can do is just as yeah. valuable as me as paying for you to go to that school. Because, yeah. you know, if I don't pay for you to go to that school, you can't impact that kid right there. Yeah. Right. It's a chain effect. Right. Yeah. It keeps, it's a ripple effect. Like and so it, don't discount yourself. No. It, just do something positive for yeah. somebody else without expecting anything yeah. in return. That's a big There's times where I'll go through a Chick-fil-A drive through and I'll be like, you know what? The girl out there taking the order, it's a little rainy and cold. Here's a $50 Visa card. You know, and they're like, what? I'm like, I don't, you know, we don't they're ask for any of that because, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm blessed with the, the South Bay drives our, our program. The, all the companies from the South Bay that help us out through Flag, um, you know, they give me gift cards and stuff. And so you can impact people's life with small things. You can give them a $10 Starbucks card and they're going to be, oh, wow. I'll make their whole right? day. Yeah. yeah. And you may not think it's just, it's $10, right? Yeah. Um, you, it doesn't have to be money, but you can do these small things that impact people's lives because there's so much negativity out there right now. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just the negativity is growing, and the only way we're going to change it, we have to change it. Nobody else is going to change it. If we sit back and wait for somebody else to change it, it's not going to be changed. Yeah. we got to get out and do it and Such get motivated. Such a good and start perspective. Like, if everybody would do what you say, like, the whole world would be different. Yeah. And it's so small. Everybody can do it. Yeah. Everybody can just, you know, pass it down, pass one good gesture. Like, you're right. <laughs> you can tell the lady in line at the Taco Bell, you know, I just want to say I really appreciate your customer service today. Ooh. Hope you have a great day, right? Because most of the time, what do they get? People yeah, yelling, shit, yeah. yeah. My oh, order yeah. this, yeah. my didn't get this. It's little things that really create. Yeah. And then now she's in a better mood, or he, yeah. and treats the other customers a little bit more. It, right. It, positivity fuels positivity yeah. negativity fuels negativity too, yeah and there's a lot of negativity in this world and it's sometimes it's by our leaders yeah. i don't like getting political but i'm like that's both sides <laughs> yeah. gotta do they're better. not helping yeah. is no. what it is right no. that's what it is they're no. not helping and then they're in a position where they can make a humongous impact and they choose not to right because yeah. they got other agendas yeah. but let's drop republican let's rock drop democrat and just yeah. be americans Huma yeah come together with positivity we can disagree on stuff but we can sit and have a cup of coffee yes. and i could say man you are crazy <laughs> But I have a better understanding of where you're yeah, coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might change you. You might change me. Yeah. Right? But we don't have to walk away with anger. Yeah. yeah. So. We could always agree to disagree. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, that that's those are key points because uh, that's part of the reason behind this podcast. We want to focus just on uh, individuals such as yourself and organizations that are doing positive things for the community because, as you mentioned, uh, you know, we have the news for uh, – highlighting negative stuff. Yeah. They'll tell you everything that happened in the day that was negative, right? Yeah. So we wanted to be a, a source of a, a refreshment, somewhere somebody can stop and really think about uh, what they've done, uh, you know, and, and just, just highlight the positive things that are going on in our community. Yeah, I, so I appreciate you guys. We man. thank Thanks you for, for that, man. I think thank that's a so wrap, much. right? Yeah, man. Yeah, I thought it was sure. wrapped a few minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take 10 minutes. No, man, you can go. Things yeah. have been like great. Yeah. Okay. Great. You can, you can go for I another can hour. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you we haven't even talked about soccer no. or, or the homework club. <laughs> Which is, yeah. The homework club is one day a week where they meet inside Nickerson Bungalow. We have our school supplies, computers. Miss Lupita, the teacher, comes out, and we tutor them. And then after we're done tutoring, we play, we play games. 
Yeah. So they'll come instead of being in their house, which is a negative area. Kind yeah, of, yeah. They come to the homework club and they just hang out for two, three hours. I have snacks for them. And we just laugh and play games. And that's where the officers yeah. will come in and, you know, have their lunch or whatever. And then they'll end up playing. You know, there's no calls going. So, you know, they'll play Monopoly or a game with them or, you know, play on the uh, um, on the TV, the PS5 yes, that I, I got for yeah. them. So it, it's it's good. You got to get your homework done first. Yeah, and then, of course. But then we have fun. There's it's, a it's reward. Funny. Yeah, you yeah, see the kids incentive. hanging out. They're done with their homework in 15 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and we check it, and then they're there for two two and a half hours just yeah. being wow. kids. Yeah. So there's a lot there's a lot of good stuff, and then yeah. there's the soccer where. Like you said, he's saying we're pretty good. No, yeah. That's drills. another podcast. That's another podcast. No, uh, and they're taking it serious. The drills wasn't oh, yeah. no like, oh, let's just. No, it's precise. Yeah. Like the pass is, I'm like, wait a minute. Go to the next reel. The next reel. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Like these kids are actually good. I'm yeah, like, I might have to ask him about what he's summer. up to. <laughs> yeah, we whooped on the LAPD's. Uh, they have, uh, you know, PAL teams that, you know, for the, uh, the cadets. Yeah. The CHP was there. And we just beat them down. It was good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was good, awesome. man. We... And his name's not Nick. Yes. <laughs> <For the laughs> name's not, just to make it clear for the last time. Yeah. It's Nickerson right, Garden. Everybody's going to think that. Yeah. Yeah.